closed between junctions five and six, causing long delays. A full look at the travel in 10 minutes. On digital radio, digital TV, downloads and online. This is BBC Radio Five Live. Five Live Breakfast with Nikki Campbell and Rachel Burden. And as I mentioned, we're going to talk to a woman now who suffers from a very rare disorder called TMAU. It's got a longer, much more unpronounceable name. And people with this condition give off a very strong, bad smell. Her name's Ellie James. She's had the condition for 14 years. Good morning, Ellie. Hi. And I've been speaking publicly about it. But tell us, first of all, because it's not something you were born with, have you any idea how you develop the condition? Um, There's two types. There's uh, TMAU1, which is genetic, which you are born with. And there's TMAU2, which is acquired, which is what I've got. Um, I haven't always had it. Um, And my endocrinologist thinks I um, acquired it after sustained and quite aggressive course of antibiotics, it, that can be known to impair the enzyme that doesn't process food properly. So what is, as best you can describe it, the particular smell? Um, it varies. The condition is known as fish odour syndrome, but that's a misnomer. Most people who have it don't actually smell like fish. Um, most people that I know of through the support group tend to smell like sulphur or ammonia, but it depends what you eat and drink. Um, I can smell very, very sickly sweet, like cheap perfume, or I can smell like rotten garbage, or I can smell like burnt rubber or chemicals, as well as sulphur does that um, mean, and sewerage. Does that mean you can control it by what you eat as well? Uh, to a degree. Um, it, it's a compound called choline, which... Uh, starts helps to start the smell off. Um, it turns it into what's called trimethylamine, which is what TMAU stands for. Mm. Um, and the body um, in someone with, with my condition, where the FMO3 enzyme is impaired, can't break that down into a neutral compound. It breaks it down into a toxic one that smells. And that's actually the smell that is associated with, with rotten fish. It's the same compound. And if you avoid foods that are high in choline, um, or trimethylamine, it can help. Uh, it can help a lot, but it doesn't eradicate it. Um, most people with TMAU still will emit some level of odour most yeah. of the time. You've been through some really awful experiences with this. I mean, a, a complete lack of understanding um, from people, perhaps understandably, who who just didn't know about the condition. So work colleagues buying you deodorants, bars of soap all the time. Uh, yeah, I don't really blame anyone for their reaction because it is a very rare condition um, and it's it's just ignorance when I've taken people aside and explained look this is a medical condition um, this is what I'm doing about it this is probably not going to make much difference please be patient it's not something I can help then people are incredibly supportive but to be completely open about it the smell is vile Um, and have people said stuff to your face before oh yeah i've uh, been verbally attacked on public transport and and in jobs i've left a couple of jobs because of it and when you don't know when you haven't got a diagnosis and you don't know why you smell um and it's it's worse because you can't often smell yourself you're relying on people's reactions you don't know what on earth is going on it must have been really frightening and even the first time you went to the doctor you didn't get a terribly sympathetic response, did you? Uh, no, well, it, it is relatively rare and many GPs are not aware of it, are only vaguely aware of it. It's not within mainstream medical practice, really. Um, and yeah, yeah, it, it, it's difficult mustering up the courage to go to a doctor in the first place because um, you're not sure there's something wrong with you. But um, my first experience, I was just lectured on personal hygiene. They thought it was just because you didn't wash yourself properly. Yes, and in fact, people who are aware they have this problem uh, tend to overwash. Yeah. I mean, you got to the stage where you were scrubbing yourself many times a day. Yeah, and using disinfectant, um, which wasn't great. It really is desperate for you. But how, how is life, now that you have an understanding of the condition, you're obviously confident enough to kind of challenge people on their reactions to you. How is life for you now? It's a lot better. Having the knowledge to know what I've got and the specific things I can and can't do about it, knowing that there's a support group and there's a very good support group 
uh, tmau.org.uk, which actually helped me find a lot of the answers. I've got an excellent endocrinologist, an excellent GP, an excellent nutritionist. It's given me a much better attitude about it. I realise I can't change people's reactions. Um, You can only do that by a slow process of education. But what I can do is change my reaction to them. And your partner, does he help in any way? Yeah, yeah. He's not really aware of it. Some people can't smell it. They're not sensitive to it. Um, But he's very supportive. He's lovely. Well, it's great to talk to you today. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. on. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Educating us about this condition. Uh, Emma, Ellie James, I beg your pardon, Ellie James, who has this very rare disorder called TMAU.